a new update for Revit 2024 is out. So now we have Revit 2024.2. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite new features like the new Revit Home, new dark mode options, new window layout options, some interesting updates for the modify sub elements. And we also have a new update for the create similar tool. Let's go. Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours of content dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Now, without any further ado, let's jump into, well, Autodesk.com. So here I am on the Autodesk website and in order in order to update Revit, you need to go to the Autodesk website, go to this menu here, and here you want to find products and services, open that up, and it's going to open up basically all of the Autodesk products that you own or have access to because it's really only a subscription. Now here we're going to search for Revit, and here is Revit, then we go to view details, and here for the details we should have the updates. And what you'll notice here is we have the Revit 2024.2 update. Now you make sure that you're here on Revit 2024. It's not going to work if you're on 2023. So make sure that you're on Revit 2024. Here's that update and then you just get download. And as soon as it downloads, you basically follow the steps. Uh, the installation is really simple and straightforward. And then you can just open up Revit again and start using the updated version. And once the update has been installed, I restarted the computer, started Revit, and here we can see 2024.2, meaning that this update has been installed properly. And now here at the home page, we can see the first change, which is the new Revit home. So if I just toggle this on, it's going to open up this uh, menu where you can see all of your projects uh, with this kind of thumbnail view. Uh, here we have the option to sort by date modified by name or by type. We also have the option to sort kind of upwards or backwards. We also have this search bar so we can enter the name of the project and we can search for it. And finally, we have some filtering options. So perhaps you're searching for the projects you worked on today, last week, last three months and so on. And then also you can filter by type. So are you looking for families or models and so on? Uh, now, moving forward, we also have the option here to switch this to a list view. And now with a list view, we have another interesting option, which is pinned. So here we have basically a list uh, with the basic information for all the projects. We can switch the kind of date modified to go uh, again, kind of from the oldest or from the newest, but we can also pin down some of these. So for example, for this file, if I decide to pin it, it's just going to jump to the top of the list. So no matter what I do, it's going to keep it there at the top of the list. So if you have a main project that you're working on day to day, well, it makes sense to pin it here and then it's always going to uh, stick there. So it's a really uh, useful feature. Now moving forward, let's go back to this thumbnail view and then I'm just going to open up the architectural sample project. Now once this is open, let me switch this to dark theme. So let's go here to file options and then here under uh, colors we have the theme and I'm just going to switch this to dark theme and click OK. So Revit is going to look like this. And now here we have this uh, strange white background, but basically we're in uh, dark mode everywhere. Of course, we can switch the canvas theme so we can switch it to white or to dark. Now, if we keep it on dark and if I go down and find some of my schedules, so let's open up one of these you can see that now the schedule is actually in dark mode. So that's the uh, new update uh, or in the dark theme. So we can view our schedules in the dark theme, which is really cool. Then moving forward, let's go to one of the floor plans like this. And now if I select one of the items here, so let's select a wall, for example, and then if I open up edit type, this edit type menu is going to open up at a certain size and proportions. 
Now, if I resize it a little bit, so let's make it a bit narrower, and then I'm going to uh, resize the columns as well. I want the parameter column to be really small, and then the value column to be much larger. Okay, so I've made these changes, and now I'm just going to click OK. And uh, previously, if I were to select any other item and then go to edit type, it would basically revert to that to some original presetting for the window size. However, now, as you can see, it's going to keep the same size and the proportion and the size of the columns, which is really cool. So you can just set it up once to what you prefer, and then Revit is going to keep that. Okay, uh, also here for these menus, what you'll notice is we have this sort by option, and we can either sort by kind of regular parameters, but we can also sort by alphabetical order uh, from A to Z or to Z to, from Z to A in reverse. So if you uh, need to find something, uh, it, this might be a bit easier to, to approach it this way. So that's just uh, an additional optionality that we have here. Moving forward, we have an enhancement when it comes to the modify sub elements option. So if you select any floor or topography or roof or something like that, anything that has shape editing in form of modify sub elements. Now, when we select that here for the elevation base, we actually have the option to pick top plane. So we can uh, not only use the current level and project base point, survey point, internal origin, we also have top plane and we can use that as reference for placing, uh, for, for adding uh, points. So that can be used. And as I said, this is going to work with floors, but also it is going to work with uh, topography. So here we also have that top plane option, which is just going to give us a bit more optionality when it comes to placing points on our uh, topo solids. Uh, then moving forward, uh, let's talk about uh, remembering draw tools. So this is really cool. When I'm uh, perhaps placing walls or something like that, I like to use the create similar option. Uh, basically, you select an element, you can right click and then use create similar and it's just going to start that command and then you can place that element here, in this case, a wall. Uh, now also you can use a shortcut CS. So if I just type in CS, it's going to start the wall command. Now what's new about this is the fact that now if I select an element, which is a line element like this wall, which was basically drawn as a simple line here. Well, if I select that and go with create similar CS, it's going to create a line. See, it's highlighted here. However, if I select this arc and type in CS, it's going to create an arc. If I create a completely new wall, so let's create a, I don't know, like a circular wall here, and then this star wall. Uh, if I select the, this one and then go with create similar, well, it's going to go to an arc because this was created uh, from uh, two arcs. Basically, that's how Revit creates these. Uh, the same thing would be with this one, probably. See, it's going to go to a line. So it's not going to work for all of them. But for example, if you're using model lines and you have a circle there, that should work. So let me try create similar CS. Yeah, it went to a circle. So yeah, it really depends on just how the geometry is structured. It's really useful because if you want to just add an additional wall, if it's supposed to be a linear wall, just select this uh, linear example, create similar, place that line. If it's supposed to be curved, select the arced one, create similar, and then create an arc. So it's just going to kind of shave off a couple of seconds every here and there, and hopefully save you a lot of time uh, throughout kind of your uh, work week. And that's going to conclude all of the interesting uh, new features for Revit 2024.2. So tell me if you like this update, uh, if you think this is cool, or if you've seen any new features that you think I, I didn't represent, but you think are really useful, uh, please tell me in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.